In this video, we're going to cover how to find the volumes of cylinders and prisms. Now, the important thing to notice with these shapes is that they have a constant cross-sectional area along their entire length. For example, this cylinder has the same circular area here at the bottom, at the middle, and at the top, while the triangular prism has the same triangular area at the front, the middle, and the back. This means that to find their volume, all we have to do is find the area of that cross section and then multiply it by the height for cylinders or the length for prisms. So for our cylinder, which has a circle as the cross section, the formula would be pi times radius squared, because that's the area of a circle, times the height. So if we write that as algebra, we can shorten the formula for cylinders as volume equals pi r squared h. Meanwhile, for the triangular prism, which has a triangle as its cross section, we'd do one half times base times height, because that's how we find the area of a triangle, times the length. And we can shorten that one to volume equals one half bhl. To see how these formulas work, let's add some measurements to our shapes and calculate their volumes. So for the cylinder, we can see that it has a radius of three centimeters and a height of 12 centimeters. So to work out the cross-sectional area of the circle, we'd do pi times the radius of three squared, and then we'd multiply that by the height of 12, which if we wanted our answer in terms of pi, would be 108 pi centimeters cubed, because three squared times 12 is 108. Or if we just wanted it as a number, that would be 339 centimeters cubed. Then for the triangular prism, we can see that it has a base of five centimeters, a vertical height of four centimeters, and a length of 14 centimeters. So to work out the cross-sectional area of the triangle, we'd start by doing one half times the base of five times the height of four, and then we'd multiply that by the length of 14 centimeters which gives us a total volume of 140 centimeters cubed. One last thing to mention is that there are loads of other types of prisms as well, like rectangular prisms, which are also known as cuboids, and pentagonal prisms, which have pentagons at either end. Whatever type of prism it is though, the formula of volume of prism equals area of cross section times length will always work. It's just how you find the area of that cross section that will change between different types of prisms. Anyway, that's everything for this video. So if you want to practice questions on this stuff or anything else in science or maths, then head over to our platform by clicking the link in the top right corner of the screen. And we'll see you again next time.